Hello, welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today you're probably looking on the screen and wondering if we're trolling you. Uh, certainly when I first saw this puzzle, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This can't be a valid Sudoku. Um, but um, it's from the Dutch master Ard van der Vettering. So it probably is a valid Sudoku. <laughs> Ard's puzzles are always fairly minimal in terms of the number of givens, but they always have had a unique solution before. So I'm sure this is no exception. Um, I'm very much looking forward to trying this because, as I say, at first gasp or first glance, it looks absolutely mad. Now, to be fair, there are some extra constraints in this puzzle, so I'd better tell you about those. The two marked diagonals here have also got to contain the digits from 1 to 9. That's one extra constraint. And there is a knight's move constraint here, which means that if we look at a cell like this, this one, this contains a 4. Now, if this was a chess knight, a chess knight could jump to a few different squares. Look, it could go to all of those squares. Now, that means that none of these yellow squares is allowed to contain a 4. So similarly, for this 8, we would be able to eliminate 8 from all of those squares as well, as well as the obvious ones. Obviously, there couldn't be an 8 in any of those squares by the normal Sudoku rules. So there's a knight's move constraint. There is a diagonal constraint and there is this grey box in the middle. Now the grey box has to be a magic square. And if you haven't come across a magic square before, it's fairly simple. Uh, what that means is that we have to make sure that every row, every column and the two long diagonals in this 3x3 three three box have to add up to the same number. So we're going to be able to do some arithmetic straight away, actually, to work on this box, I think. I know some of the principles of little magic squares. So we'll talk about how we can make a start. That's, this is definitely where I'm going to be starting the puzzle. And we'll see what we can do. Um, if you want to have a go, and I definitely recommend it. I mean, this is, this is something else, isn't it, when you're confronted with this as apparently a, a real Sudoku. Um, click on the link under the video. That will take you to our webpage where you can play along. <coughs> Oh, frog in my throat. At least I hope that's all it is. And um, yeah, let's get cracking and see how we do. So what can we say about this box? Well, the simplest way to think about it, I think, is that we know the sum of this box. If we add up all of the digits from 1 to 9, uh, we get 45. Now, we also know that in a magic square, this row, this row, and this row all have to add up to the same digit. So let's call that x. We know that this will add up to x. That will be 2x. That will be 3x. So 3x has got to equal 45. So x is 15. We get that straight away. Now, the next thing we could think about, I think, is the central square. Yeah, because the central square is the only square in a in a uh, in a magic square with an odd number of sort of rows and columns. The central square sees what needs to we need to make fifteen more ways than any other cell with the central square because the central square is part of a column it's part of a row and it's part of both diagonals. Now it's the only square that meets that criteria. So whatever we put in this square, there have to be four different ways of making 15 using this square. So we know actually this square therefore is a five. Now how do I know that? Well I know that um, there are four ways of making 10 without using five. So it just axiomatically, it must be the only way of doing this. We can use 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7 and 4, 6, um, add it to 5 and we're going to get 15. So I, I know that it works for 5 and it can't work for any other digit because we we know that this is the only cell that can, can make 15 in four different ways. Every other cell has to be more restricted than that. So if you if we look at this square, this square has to be, we have to be able to make 15 once in the row, twice using a column, 
and three times using the diagonal. So these squares, there must be three different ways of making 15. And these squares, these squares are only two different ways because this square would have to be part of a sum making 15 in this direction and part of a sum making 15 using the five. So let's think about nine. If nine, nine plus five plus one is 15 and nine plus two plus four is 15. And that's the only two ways of making 15 using a nine. So nine has to be in one of those squares. As does one, because one, one, five, well, we need to make 14 in two, cell, two cells, and the only, there are only two ways of doing that, five and nine and six and eight. So it's probably, we need the odd digits in these positions. Let's try three. If we had three plus five plus seven, that would work. And then in the row, we'd have to have three, and we couldn't use, we have to, so we have to make these two add up to 12 without using five and without using three. So that's right, that would be four and eight. So three and seven are gonna be also in these positions. Let's just check seven just for the sake of argument. Seven plus five plus three, and then seven. We'd need these two to add up to eight without using a five, without using a seven. So these would be two and six, yeah. So um, these must be even. Let's check that's right. So if we had an eight in this square, eight plus five plus two, then these two would have to both add up to seven without using five, two. And there are two ways of making seven or two more ways of making seven, which would be three, four and one, six. So this, this is definitely working. And there's a four, eight here. So this, these can't be four and eight. So these are two and six. Therefore these are four and eight down here. And now the two actually does, it allows us to place a two in the magic square. This can't be a two. So that's a two, that's a six, which means we know this digit, that must be a seven to make 15. And now this must be a three to make 15 this way. This must be a four, that must be an eight. So we're actually gonna be able to finish the magic square. I don't know why I'm surprised by that, but I just am. Um, so actually, although we only had four given digits, we could place a five immediately because of the magic square and then we could use those four digits to determine another eight more digits straight away. That's very nice. So now we can finish this row, can't we? We've got one, five and nine to place along here. That one can't be a five because of the knight's move. That one can't be a nine because of the knight's move. Three, eight, four, three, eight, four. So this, these three squares are three, four and eight. And again, we can do a little bit of tidying up there. So these squares must be two, six, and seven. So these squares must be two, six, and seven. And these squares must be one, five, and nine. So we've, now we can do a bit of tidying again because of these knight's move constraints look. So let's do as much as we can. Um, yeah, that can't be a six, that can't be a seven. So what do we do now? Ah, oh, this is a two. That square can't be a two because the two down there. So that's a two. So that gives us three twos in the grid. Ah, we can place a two up here, look, because this two sees that square and that square. This square on the diagonal, that one on the knight's move. So this must be a two. This two there, it rules, oops. This two rules out that one and that one by knight's move. So there must be a two in one of those squares. Ooh, now that's rather cool because let's just have a look at this box up here. Where can two go? Now two can't go there, because if we try and put a two there, it rules out that square from being a two and that one. So there would be nowhere to place a two in this box. 
Oh, whoops, see, I didn't want to do that. I actually just want to delete that one. So this is not two. And this is not two for the same reason. That rules out that one, and that's one by the knight's move. So two in this box is in one of those two squares. That means it's not here. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, actually, we're going to be able to place a two in this box. Good grief. Yeah, because we can't now put a two in either of those squares in this box. Because if we do, we can't actually put a two in either of those squares. So we put a two here, it rules out that one and that one. Because of the knight's move constraint. Same thing is true of that square. So where can we put a two in this box? We can't put it there. We've got these twos ruling out those squares. Can't put it there for the reasons I just mentioned. That two sees that square. So that is a two. Which means this is a two. So that's a six and that's a seven. This two sees that square by knight's move. Look, so that's not a two. This one must be a two. That means this one is a two. And this one is a two. And we've done all the twos all of a sudden. Wow. Wow, how elegant is that? So, what do we do next? Well, hang on. This three must be what we do next. Now, why do I pick this number? Well, if we look at the communication, apart from twos, everything is jammed into these squares. So it feels to me like the diagonals must be the place we need to look for our next digit. Now, the most powerful digit of that we've got here as regards these diagonals is this three. Now why do I say that? Because that square is ruled out and this three rules out both of those squares from the diagonal as well by the knight's move. So the three must be in one of those two squares. Ah, and that three sees that square. Yeah, so that is good. That does force this to be a three. That means that's an eight look. That's a four. That's a three. So now there's a three in one of those two squares. Now, can we do anything with that? No, but look, we've got threes here and here, and that is powerful because that rules out those squares and this three sees those two squares. So this is three, which means Oh, nice, yeah, so we can continue this now. These threes rule out all of those squares naturally. That one by knight's move from this one here, so there's another three we can place. Therefore, up here the three is in one of two positions, look. Oh, and now we need a three on this diagonal. And those threes tell us it can't be in any of those squares. So it must be in one of those three squares and our pencil marking tells us it's that square. And this three, <laughs> this is so clever, isn't it? Look, this three forces this to be the three because it's the, we can't have a three here or a three here because of the knight's move. So that, we've actually done all the threes as well now. Wow. Right, so now, it's a fascinating puzzle this, because it's, it's, it's very linear the way we have to go about solving it. Now my eyes are drawn to this six, and the reason this six draws my eye is that I can see it's ruling out those squares. Now combined with what we've just done with the two and the three, this looks like it's sort of meant to be, doesn't it? That we get a six locked up here. Oh yeah, so now look at this. 
the sixes can't go in this these squares, and this six rules out those two via knight's move. So there's a there is a six placeable. Six is in one of those two squares down there. We don't know about this diagonal yet. Uh, so on this diagonal we need one, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, that one sees an, an 8 and a 9. That can only be a 1 or a 7. Ah, and that can't be a 7. Because if we put... Look, let me show you. If I put a 7 here, that square and that square can't be a 7 because of the knight's move constraint. So that can't be a 7. That's a 1. That's a 9. One now can't be in those so that we can lock the one into one of two positions down here these squares have got to be seven eight and nine now the sevens rule out two of those squares so this is a seven these two squares must be eight and nine sevens must be in one of those two squares these must be one four five four rules out that one so there's a four in one of those two squares. Four in one of these three squares. Sevens. Sevens look in this box, that must be good. Seven, yes. 7 by knight's move rules out all of the yellow squares, so there's a 7 in one of those two positions. That forces this square to be a 7. These squares, therefore, have got to be 4, 5 and 9 in some order. Just wondering what we can eliminate. So this 5 sees that square, the 4 sees that square. So we've got one, six, seven, one, six, seven, and eight to place. That square can only be a one or an eight because it sees a six and a seven. And the eights, look, these eights, I think they're gonna, they are. This eight sees that square by a knight's move, so the eights can be pencil marked in box three into those squares, which means this is a one. That means that's a five. This is a one down here as well. I mustn't lose track of all, everything we're doing here. So there's a five here. That means this is a nine. That's a four. That's a five. Five over here now. This five allows us to get rid of five from those two squares. The four backfires into this um, box and gives us a four and a one as well. There's a one in one of those squares. Four in one of these two positions. Six, seven and eight. So now we've got six digits in row two, so we still need to place four, six, and eight. So we've not pencil marked sixes at all. That one can't be a four. That one can't be an eight. Ones and fives are pencil marked. Sevens and nines are not pencil marked, but we don't know anything about them. Well, the nine is eliminated from that square, I guess. Must be a five in one of those two squares. Looking at the column, we can see we can't place five in those two. So 
So maybe I have to look at this diagonal. I've got two, three, five, and eight. So I need one, four, six, seven, nine. So that sees a six and a one. So this has to be four, seven, or nine. That's not that's not a great restriction. Oh no, four as well here. So I'm going mad. One, four, six, seven, nine. Yeah, this has to be seven or nine. That is better, but still not quite resolvable. This square is interesting because, of course, we've got this one, five, nine triple here. So it's not possible to put a one, five or a nine in this square because that would eliminate that digit entirely from those three options. So this can't be one, five or nine. It can't be two or three. It can't be four. It can be can it be uh, can't be five can be six can't be seven can't be eight and it can't be nine because we've just talked about that so that square is actually a naked single that is a six that that means that square up there must be a four now on the diagonal which means there's a four down there so we've got to place one, seven, and nine on this diagonal still. So this square can be, oh bother, I think it can be anything. So that can be one, seven, or nine. This can't be seven, this can be one or nine. So fours now must be in one of those two squares. Uh, okay, well, let's look at column five. We still need to place four, six, eight, and nine. So that square can be four, six, or eight, I think. Bother. Six, eight, nine. This one, oh, that's better. Four, six, and eight. So this square is a nine. Sees a six, a four, and an eight via the knight's move. So that square is a nine on its own. So that square is a four, six, or an eight. Let's have a look at this column. We need five, six, seven, and eight into this one. That sees a five up there and an eight actually. So that's got to be six or seven. That's a seven in the box. So this is also a naked single. That's a six. That means that's a six. So this is a seven, eight pair now which means we can write that square in. That's got to be a five to complete the column. That means that's a five. That, oh, now, let's not make a mistake, but that seems to mean that that's a five, which means this is a four. That means that's a four and this is an eight. That means that's an eight and that's a six. That's a six and that's a seven. This can no longer be seven up here. So seven can only go in this position on this diagonal now. That must be a seven to complete the column. These two squares need to be six and nine, and that's resolvable. These two squares can't be six anymore. This is a four, eight combo. And what's pointing at this to resolve it? That four is, there you go. So that's an eight, that's a four. These squares here need to be one, nine, and eight. That's a nine, therefore, because there's a one and an eight up there. 9, 1, 8, 8, 9, 1, 9, 5, still looks like it's working, that 8, 7 can be resolved here like that, this is a 7 now, that must be a 5, that resolves the 5 and the 1, that resolves the 1 and the 9, there you go. What a beautiful puzzle. That's quite startling. I mean, it really is. That, 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 that has a unique solution. Is, I mean, it's something magical. Magical. Thank you very much, Ard, for sending that in. Loved it. Uh, let me know in the comments whether you guys enjoyed it. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.